Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to Oracle Open World 2015. I'm Stu Miniman here with Brian Gracely. We're with Wikibon.com, and you are watching The Cube. The ESPN Attack, we go out to all the big shows, help extract the signal from the noise. Happy to have back on the program, but in a new role, Ramesh Chator, who's the Senior Director of Business Development with Tejal Systems. Hey now, welcome to the program. Hey Stu, thank you and John. Um, I'm Ramesh, like you said, from Tejal. Uh, we're on the business development team, working very closely with uh, Oracle and Cisco and Virtualized Partners, so glad to be here back again, guys. All right, so yeah, I mean, massive show, uh, big ecosystem, uh, and it's an interesting one. I mean, you know, the database is the center of the universe, but applications are changing. Oracle's role uh, has changed quite a bit. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what your week's like been here uh, and, and what's going on with Tejal at the show. It's been a busy week. Oracle Open World is huge. There's about 50,000 customers descended here. If you walk across the show floor, or show floor, what we hear is they love the database, Oracle database, enterprise ready. They like the application. It's more virtualized now. If you look like a few years ago, the product was not as virtualized, so the storage that's beneath uh, got to do things differently. Like how do you treat those virtualized workloads? And that's where we come in in consolidating those mission critical workloads and, and how we work with the hypervisors, whether it's VMware, Oracle, and others. And that's where we bring in value. Yep. All right, can you talk a little bit about you know, how Oracle fits into kind of the, the Tejal application uses. You know, the, when we talked about, you know, what applications go on what, I mean, the, the, the database is kind of at the top, mission critical, this, you know, runs our business, super important, so, you know, how, how does that fit? Absolutely, so, so if you look at our top three use cases, the databases, uh, virtualized workloads and BDIs. And when you look at the higher end of the enterprise space and the mid-level, people ask for databases that can give not just good performance, but consistent performance. And Oracle Database and SQL Server fit right in there. And that's where we come in because we support all kinds of different protocols that are mission ready. And uh, we are able to enable and consolidate that. And that's what makes it special. Yeah, so in your role in business development, you're not only sort of have to think about today, but what's, what might come. Lots of changes in the storage industry. We've got you know, mergers and consolidations. We've got you know, shift in media. What, what's your overall take on the storage industry right now? I mean, it's, it's a crazy amount of change. So you know, uh, there's a lot of players out there, right? If you look at the show floor, there's a lot of storage players, a lot of upstarts, but we are way past that, right? And then there's one or two incumbents, maybe just one left. And what they've done is the bigger players, they've started with a disk architecture and they've tried to bolt and flash there and try to make it look better. We've taken a different design approach, right? We've built it from the ground up. Um, so newer workloads are landing, like gaming workloads, like you know, big data applications like MongoDB. It's just not the same workload. So customers are more open now. They're looking at us, at us and landing those workloads on us. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of a trend recently where customers want to build some of their own applications now, more of that. How much do you guys see of people bringing applications back in-house or developing their own versus you know, maybe being completely dependent on commercial applications? We do, uh, there's a lot of homegrown applications uh, with all the compliances that gets in, in the financial space, for example. They want to run their own applications and you want to meet those SLAs. And that's where the problem of the silos come in. There's, purpose-built storage for each of the silos. And if you're a DBA, good luck with that. You cannot manage all of that. So what we've done is, our mantra is one flash platform for any workload. So you can start with a hybrid or the flash and go expand either ways. So truly flexible architecture, it comes in one chassis. So that's where we are so flexible with that. Yeah. So, Ramesh, one of the big discussions we've been having this week, uh, Brian actually joked, we should call this Oracle Cloud World. Uh, so, you know, how does the discussion of cloud fit into, you know, both the partnerships you're having with Tejal and what the customer discussions are today? So, you know, uh, cloud is maturing. You can see all the news over the last couple of weeks. Cloud's certainly growing. Uh, what you want to be careful about as a 
You know, you want to look into the cloud and see what do you want to put in the cloud? What kind of SLAs can you get out of it? Is it the same performance? Is it the same expectations? So from a private cloud solution, you could take a homegrown architecture, deploy it on, on arrays, and build it for a Microsoft private cloud, for example. That is going on very well. For a public cloud, I think there's certain use cases that do well and, and certain that do not. If you're throwing in a mission critical application like an Oracle database, you're probably well off running the mission critical part on a standard architecture like an IntelliStack with Cisco UCS or another partner, right? That's where, and then roll it on. It would be a slow roll to the cloud for those mission critical architectures. Yeah. You're, you're a Cube alum, you've been on before. You were back before talking about big data. Yeah. Where does big data and analytics fit? With, with, uh, with Tejal? So if you look at any newspaper or article today, everyone talks about big data and analytics, and it's a very loosely coined term. So there's two big areas. One is the whole Hadoop growth with applications landing on those Hadoop-like workloads. And analytics could be different. It could be on the edge, it could be on the core, and all of those. The key thing for us is, whether it's big data or analytics, is to solve those business challenges and provide the right business outcomes find the case studies, right? If it's an archival kind of application, probably it's good to run on disks. Uh, if it's mission critical, a combination makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah, Ramesh, you mentioned a couple, I mean, I think Hadoop, we've looked at some of the architectural considerations for this, and Hadoop tends to be bursty. You know, it needs performance when it needs it, but uh, you know, I, I don't need you know, as much infrastructure on, on of it. Uh, some have said that maybe the intersection of cloud and big data is where that needs to be. Um, you know, you know, which are kind of the analytics, you mentioned MongoDB, things like Splunk, you know, how many of those are you guys seeing in kind of your customer base, um, and which ones are fit for, for so your customers? So the big players like Microsoft and Oracle Database always come up for mission critical, and with the cost savings and the flexibility that we provide, uh, the customers are willing to take that savings and put it and invest it into like a MongoDB, or like a Hortonworks, or a MapR. Um, what we do is we look at the use case and see where do we fit in and what do we do well. Um, one of the things these applications like MongoDB do well is on the archival side. They need a secondary tier that they can rely on and give consistent performance. Performance is stable stakes, everybody gets it. Where we come in is provide the database, no spikes, right? Give the consistent performance so the SLAs are met. Well, you're in business development, you're getting all sorts of opportunities, and sometimes they're, you know, on, on the surface you go, hmm, I don't know if that'll work. Give us a couple of examples of ones where you thought, hmm, I'm not sure if that's right, and it's turned out to be really successful. Yeah, I mean, uh, the big one, I would say, is uh, on the retail side, right? You know, you have different kinds of applications bombarding there. Their SLAs are different, like, if you look at, like, Oracle Retail, you know, they have, like, a, a super algorithm that runs well and they take advantage of what we do. Uh, we do what's called inline compression and inline dedupe. So you can argue that some of the features can be done on the software side, but there's a reason storage vendors exist. And we provide that SLAs and reliability that make it well for like a inventory processing. Like if you're a safe way, if you want to run uh, all your inventory and get what kind of inventory is need to be restocked, you want to do that at a very consistent level that a database can repeat and show it to you. All right, so, so Ramesh, uh, as you look back at Oracle Open World 2015, what are some key findings you had? Uh, you know, what, what do you think people will be taking away from the show this year? Uh, I think 2015 and moving into 2016 is Flash is going to grow. Flash platform is going to be adopted more and more for mission critical applications. And the reason for that is the economics are catching up with the performance. So performance was always well established. With the amount of work we were able to do on compression and dedupe and algorithms like that, you're able to get the same kind of economics and the same kind of performance. So the cost per IOP or the cost per IOPS is perfect. So you'll see a lot more flash, and 2016, I think, is going to be the year for big data applications. 
All right. Ramesh, really appreciate you coming back to the program. Uh, it's actually the close of our coverage of Oracle Open World 2015. Want to remind everyone, you can always get the videos on siliconangle.tv. See the list of upcoming events. Next week we actually have two great events coming up. It's the HGST CrossFit, as well as uh, the Juniper Next Work uh, user conference. Go to wikibon.com for all the research. Uh, thank you so much for watching. For Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely, this is theCUBE. Thank you.